Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sea Star League presented by GameStop. It is Wednesday night, which means it is time for some Rocket League and bringing you all the action. Hunted and Vitali, how are you feeling tonight, sir? I'm all right, man. You know, it's it's been a week, but, you know, I'm excited to get into the action. I mean, you always ask me how, how I'm doing, but how are you doing? I mean, we well, never ask you that. You know, I'm glad you asked because I'm doing fantastic as I cannot wait to play these Rocket League matches. We are in the West Coast tonight, Vitaly. And first up, it's UC Berkeley versus Northridge. What do you think of this matchup going into it? It's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, I mean, these two teams, obviously, Berkeley ha coming in 0-2, but they have lost to Cal Poly Pomona, and they're obviously a solid team. And then we've got Cal State Northridge, and they come in 2-1. and one. So I'm kind of interested to see the, the kind of dynamic that these two teams have. And... I'm, I'm interested, and I, I hope to see a close series out of these two teams. Obviously, we have Berkeley on the broadcast tonight twice, so hopefully we get to see some good matchups out of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see how this one will play out, and Cal State Northridge is coming into this one, as you said, 2-1. and one. The only loss they have so far on the season was to the Beach Boys, as they are called, uh, <laughs> as they call their team, and uh, you know, that's it's a tough team to lose against, but, you know, it, you've got to uh, come into this matchup knowing that you're playing against a struggling opponent in Berkeley and try to take advantage of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, as you said, the Beach Boys, that's a great name, by the way. I wish every team <laughs> I could be on could be named that. But you, as you said, they, are, they could be a little bit of a, a reeling team, especially starting out the, the season 0-2. So... But at the same time, I feel like they could be, you know, they could have worked on some things, come back roaring in the series. Obviously, they're going to be on stream. So they want to prove something to this, you know, community that's watching on Twitch. But at the same time, they want to prove it to themselves, you know. So we're, we're down 0-2, but just able to come back in this season. Obviously, it is a long league play. But getting those wins early and starting now is, is definitely helpful uh, long term. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Berkeley plays tonight because of uh, some scheduling issues. We are going to be watching Berkeley in game one and game two. So they are not going to go away after this first series. So we could see them come away with two wins, two losses, maybe go one and one. But it's going to have to be a quick transition from series one to series two for them. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, they, as you said, they have to play one series right after the next. So if they kind of get into a rough spot where um, they lose the first series and then they get all down on themselves and they're like, oh, we have to play on stream again and play, it's going to be tough for them. But I think if they come out strong and they get a win in the first series, they do have a strong possibility of getting the next one as well. But they do have to have a strong, I think they have to have a strong start in order to have a strong finish. Yeah, very. I mean, it's kind of the the rule of uh, momentum, right? And Rocket League is such a game that relies so heavily on that. So we'll see how that plays out for Berkeley. We are trying to get all the players into the server to get things started. Sorry for the delay. We'll get that underway as soon as possible. But Vitaly, I want to ask you, how much do you know about either of these two teams heading into the series? I don't know a whole lot. But I've got a feeling that we'll know their names after this uh, series. Uh, obviously, we're going to see Berkeley twice. So we're going to know their na names after calling them for two series in a row. But I'm excited to see. Just because CSO has kind of these unknown names that bring their teams to the forefront. And hopefully we see some pretty solid players. Uh, I mean, on, on the side of uh, Northridge, you got Mute, Amateur, and was that? Se Senior Taco. What a name. Man, these names that we're having on the CSL broadcast, <laughs> I love it. Um, but I, I feel like that that's – those are some players that, that could could bring out a, a strong dynamic in each other and in this series. And obviously, Berkeley, uh, the players we know, you know, Falcons Rise Up, Richard, uh, Logical. I, had, uh, I, I tripped over that one, the first one, the pre-show. <laughs> the pre um, but I feel like that these players could really, really bring out a strong – showing even though we don't really know a whole lot about them um and i'm hoping i'm really hoping we see a close series um i'm, I'm excited to get this definitely started 
with the first series of the night. Yeah, me too. I can't, uh, again, stress how important it is going to be for Berkeley to make sure they stay level-headed throughout the evening with playing two series back-to-back. -back. We'll see how they manage to do. And again, we are just trying to get all the players into the servers. It looks like somebody's having problems with cross-play, unfortunately. So we're trying to uh, sort that out. We'll get that underway as soon as possible. But we're in the West of Vitali, and some of the best teams in the collegiate scene come out of the West, specifically in California. And this is going to be a tight uh, uh, division. We, we know that, that Pomona is here. They obviously in the CRL. They are a big name and a big presence. How do you yeah. go into a league such as this where you're going to be playing against some of the best teams in the collegiate space with you know a positive mentality um really it's in the collegiate scene it's not so much of you know pro scene where you, you kind of uh, obviously except for this season this season was a mess i don't know it's crazy but most of the time the top teams win and you kind of have to go into a mentality of the fact that in a collegiate scene anything can happen on any given day just because of the fact that any team can show up really and pop off and have, you know, the series of their lives and beat them. I mean, even though it is Cal Poly Pomona, you know, they're a solid team. I know some players on that team personally. I feel like if you pop off, if you're a solid player and you do elevate yourself to that top level, I mean, there's no telling what you can do, you, even though there is that top team in here. Who knows? Who who knows? Anything can happen in this division, and obviously, um, I'm excited to see who makes playoffs out of this division because I think that anyone who makes a playoffs out of here could be a strong contender. I absolutely agree with you, and uh, it does look like everything has been sorted out. Cross play is good to go now. We have the teams uh, joining and ready. We are underway. Game number one between UC Berkeley. And Cal State Northridge. Northridge is going to be in blue tonight. Berkeley in orange. You already introduced the team. Senior Taco, Amateur, and Mute for Northridge. Logical, Addy, and Richard in the orange for Berkeley. We are underway 20 seconds in. No score as of quite yet. Senior Taco is going to play that off the back wall. Amateur now looking for a touch over top of Addy. Can't quite get around him. It's going to be Logical. To clear it back down. Great uh, dunk there onto Senior Taco, but it falls into the corner. And we're going to go back and forth. First goal going to be pretty important for both teams. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like for more important for Berkeley, as we've said, they have two games on the schedule tonight, so they want to get out to a good start. I'm really loving Senior Taco's car there. He's got you know the the hat and everything. It's just a theme. It's fantastic, but. For sure, if you want, you have to get the first goal. If you want to feel good about yourself, and in this series, it is a best of five, so there is a lot of time. Even if you do lose that first game, you can still come back and really, really. Even if you lose the first game, you could really show up in the the next three games. And I mean, anything can happen in a best of five. It isn't a best of three, obviously, but best of five means there's a longer series, more time to make adjustments. Right, absolutely. And speaking of. Good looking cars, amateur. I like that hot pink style. <laughs> good, good on that octane. That careens towards the net. Great play by Mute to keep that one out. Really had our first goal of the game by Berkeley there. But Mute will reject them for now. Now Berkeley has to play defense. Mute takes the shot. Addy's up. He's gonna bounce down in front. No follow up as Mute was demoed on the play. So now Senior Taco looking for amateur across the mid. Addy, no problems on the clear. We've played just about two minutes here in game number one. Still nil-nil. Both teams trying to break through the armor of the other, but we haven't seen any shots yet. Glancing blows at most so far, Vitaly. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there has been a few offensive opportunities, but nothing too crazy as two players run into each other, but they are going to stay there. Both well, players kind of turn. A bit of mis miscommunication as it gets cleared out for free. Richard still clearing it down, but I feel like, you know, the first person who, who gets the, the first team that gets a goal, it's going to be off a mistake. These two teams are playing pretty solid defense, and I feel like all it's going to take is one mistake to just score the first goal. And uh oh, that might be it. it. Oh, no, it isn't, but a good clear away. It's still, we stay nothing, nothing with two minutes left in game number one. 
Ute nearly giving the opportunity to Berkeley. He ends up making the play as Amateur has to go up and make the touch as well. Logical trying to find the rebound. It creams into the corner for Amateur to try to play. Way up high, Senior Taco will touch it down. Amateur and Ute both up for it. Neither one touch it. It's going to be logical to keep it in the Northridge territory, but... Again, Senior Taco, good defensive positioning. Amateur will help out as well. Addy has to rotate around. Pops this one up. Amateur can't quite get the touch behind the defender. So we played nearly three and a half minutes here in game number one. Still nothing on the board. A couple of close calls specifically for this Northridge team. They've kept things out. It could come down to just whoever scores the first goal wins the game. Yeah. A little bit scrappy from Northridge. They've made a few mistakes in their own defensive half, but they've been able to clean things up as of late and recover off of mistakes. But Mute is going to try to get it past. It's going to go all the way down. Logic didn't recover in time. He's still going to put it in the middle, but Richard can't finish it off. And it stays nothing, nothing. And as you said, it might just come down to that first goal to whoever wins it in this one. Senior Taco had a chance, but he couldn't quite get a touch on it. Three shots on the board so far for Berkeley, two for Northridge. Definitely a defensive struggle so far here, obviously, with no score on the board. Only 35 seconds left to go. It's going to be Senior Taco. Try to clear it out of the zone. Addy keeps it in. Amateur has mute across the pitch. Finds the pass. Can't get the shot on goal. But now a final attack from Northridge. Can Senior Taco turn in on this one? He'll keep the ball in. This goes out of the corner. 15 seconds left. Up in front. Mutes there. Shoots. Hits the crossbar with the shot. That was the opportunity for Northridge, but it looks like we're headed into overtime. Just to keep it up here. Amateur takes the shot towards wow. that. The caster curse gets hunted, and they get the first goal of game number one with one second left. This is a beautiful second touch from Amateur, but Logical not able to get the block. And that might just do it here for game number one. Can Berkeley respond with just this second left? No, they cannot. Northridge, they take game number one. It was a one nothing game, close affair. Came down to a final second goal, but a good start for the boys in blue. Uh, yeah. Berkeley, if you want to blame anyone, blame Hunted. He uh, said that we were going to overtime. Uh, but amateur... Putting that first goal in on really a defensive showdown for both teams. Um, it really felt like it, it, it felt like it was gonna be a goal like that to break through. I mean, that was kind of a it was a it was a goal that just leaked through the defense. And if you're on Berkeley, you can't let yourself get down on that. I mean, it was a very close game, and it was only one shot that just happened to get through. I don't even know how that got through. It's a fantastic effort, solo effort, but we're on the side of Berkeley. You, know, you got to come back in game number two, you find the net. Because uh, in game number one, it really felt like they were just trying to live off of these defensive possessions and hope that they didn't score. And unfortunately, right at the end, they did. And hopefully we see some more offense from them in game number two and kind of bounce back. And hopefully they don't go down in the morales in this one. Yeah, and Berkeley had a couple of opportunities there throughout the game, a couple of giveaways by the Northridge defense. They just weren't able to capitalize on those uh, chances. If they are able to put those balls in the back of the net when they get the opportunity, that's easily a 2-1, maybe a 3-1 game in favor of Berkeley there. So you can't get down on yourself too much as you had those opportunities. Just got to put that home. Obviously, game number one over in the first, uh, in this uh, best of five. So still plenty of time left for Berkeley to try to come back in the series. Let's see if this one turns into another low-scoring game. I have a feeling things are going to open up a little bit here in game two. Yeah, game one might have just been like a feel-out sort of game, and no players really wanted to make that mistake, but... You're right, I do feel like this could be a breakout game. Northridge have... Both teams had quite a few offensive chances in game number one, but just couldn't finish it off. So we'll see how things happen. Oh, what a touch from Richard, but I get saved from you. It was a really good try to open it up. Is that he's just going to put them in the corner. and Nothing really doing in this game number two so far. About a minute into game number two. 
Good offensive aggression from Northridge. Amateur out in front. Mutes there to score. It's one nothing early on for the Cal State team. And, you know, right as I say, nothing really happening. Richard, a bit of a missed touch, and then Addy putting that one in the midfield right for Mutant. For Mute, that's got to feel good. He had that first shot in game number one that just kind of went off that crossbar. It's got to feel good to finally put one in and give his team the lead. And in game number two, Northridge starts out hot. Good job from them. But if you're Berkeley, you got to come back and get a goal quickly so it doesn't continue to grow as it might here as Taco puts off the crossbar. Unfortunate for them, it stays one nothing. Amateur off the ceiling, and he can't quite find the touch. Amateur will have another shot at this one. Richard to clear it away. Goes over top of Mute. Senior Taco to keep the pressure on. Double commit out of the corner. Mute fires just high. Amateur rebound. He hits the crossbar as well. Nearly a two-goal game for Northridge, but some misfires on the offensive side. We stay one nothing. a minute 30 in to game number two. Yeah, there's been about three crossbars up on the side of Northridge so far. Berkeley kind of getting away with letting them take shots. See how long that can happen. Is That's just going to be a touch into the midfield. Logical with a good recovery. It's going to get taken away from them, though. But Berkeley, they're playing a little bit of scary defense right now. They're you know, hoping on the crossbar to bail them out. And after a certain point... You're going to get scored on if you keep letting them take shots, especially from the top of the box. Like this is a pass on the midfield. Amateur, a little bit too far back. And if you're on the side of Berkeley, you want to try to close down that defensive side. Don't let these chances come through. 240 left to go. Game number two, still a 1-0 lead for Northridge. It has been all Northridge, however, in this game. We have not seen the blue side of the pitch for very long in this one. But finally, Berkeley do get on the offensive side. Quick shot towards the net off the crossbar. Logical trying to deflect that one home. But Senior Taco is there to clear it away. Now Mute back on the counterattack. Senior Taco winning the challenge by Richard. Amateur shoots. He scores. 2-0 now for Northridge. Yeah, it just a, a good challenge by Taco in the offensive half. And this is shot. It just goes right in. There's nobody back in net. And it's a 2 nothing lead. And if you're on the side of Berkeley, I mean, this is... You got to stop the bleeding now, and hopefully you get a goal here. Uh, things might run, get away from you here in game number two, and hopefully that doesn't lead to game number three. Just got to keep that positive mentality through, through and through. Hope that you get a goal here to stop the bleeding, as both players kind of double commit there. But a shot towards the crossbar. It's going to go up the crossbar again, and a couple offensive opportunities. Another double commit. This might be another goal for Northridge, but it's going to be just wide, and we stay at 2 nothing. Senior Taco down in front. Logical. Can't quite get it outside of the box. There's Amateur. He'll score. It's a 3 nil game now for Northridge. Amateur on his second. Gets it on his ninth shot of the game. Certainly been peppering the net. Yeah. I mean, Amateur, a good shot there, and it's 3 nothing Northridge. And as you said earlier, it's been all Northridge. I don't think we've seen much of the blue half at all, which is very contrary to game number one. But now it's all Northridge. And if you're on Berkeley, you just got to try to shore up your defense of that midfield half. Midfield control. As that's going to go off the crossbar again. And they've had a ton of shots that just go off the crossbar. Just missed opportunities. As this is another slow roller. That's going to go all the way across. And if you're Berkeley, it's just got to be a feels bad with about a minute left. Hopefully you can turn things around game for game number three. Just need a little bit of luck on the side of Berkeley here to put one past the blue defenders. Not gonna happen as Senor Taco gets in on the scoring action. He'll make it four nil now with just about 61 seconds to go. But we're gonna be heading into game three, most likely with Northridge up two nil in the series. and. Gonna have to, uh, something's gonna have to change here for Berkeley. It seems like they're getting caught on the defensive side, really getting outmaneuvered, as that's a good goal from Richard to at least open the scoring for Berkeley. Yeah, a good kickoff here. Addy just kills it, and Richard with a good flick. But as you said, it's, it's been all Northridge in this game, number two. Um, as much as that was a good goal to get one back, it is 4 3 with a minute left, and 
again, if you're on the side of Berkeley, you want to not have that happen. You have this game number two happen. Is you had a really close game number one, probably one that you could have won, and now you go down in game number two like this, and you go down 0-2, and it's it's tough. I mean, to reverse sweep a team like this when they have all the momentum in game number two, it's definitely going to be tough for Berkeley, but. I feel like it's possible if they just short up that midfield, that defensive half, win those challenges in their own half, and hopefully things can turn around for them. Well, all but over here in game number two, four one, with just about 15 seconds remaining. It will be Northridge taking game two. We will see a game three with Northridge up to nil in the series, so it's going to be pressure time for Berkeley. They're going to have to come back, win three games in a row if they want to uh, take this series. But it has been quite a, a clinic from Northridge, really keeping the Orange defenders in their own half. And it is a marked difference from game number one. We saw a lot of back and forth play, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure if that's Berkeley playing uh, more timid or if it's just Northridge getting in the flow. Yeah, I don't know. I, I genuinely, I'm unsure. I, I, I feel like it's part of it's partly both. Um, Northridge just kind of picked up the pace, and Berkeley was really unable to match it. Um, I mean, amateur, you saw there with nine shots, so that offensive flexing of your muscles, as you will. But every almost every goal is assisted on the side of Northridge, which is really good. I mean, you see those team plays coming out and. If you're on the side of Berkeley, you can't let those things happen. You can't allow them to really control that offensive half of yours, control the boost, that sort of thing. You can't allow the crossbar to also be your best friend in net. Um, but hopefully they can turn things around in game number three. I mean, it is going to be a long road back, but every road uh, starts back with one win. It is a fresh start in game number three, zero, zero, five minutes on the clock. So hopefully they can do that. As you said, we will have a fresh start here in game three. Nail, nail, five minutes on the clock. And it uh, certainly has been a struggle for Berkeley to find that offensive aggression. They have not been able to get in the blue zone much at all. I think a lot of that stems from their midfield play. They're just not quite fast enough to the ball. And Northridge is taking advantage of that. However, we've seen a lot of opportunities get generated when they did find themselves on the blue half. They're hitting a lot of crossbars, a lot of posts. If you can just shore that up, it's the same point that we were, we made after game number one. If you can clean that up, you will be scoring goals and you'll be scoring what feels like more goals than Northridge because Northridge, while they're keeping you in your zone, they're not generating those kind of offensive chances that, uh, that Berkeley had been. And just like this, if Addy can take this one and make sure he puts this in the back of the net just like that, Berkeley's off to a quick start. Yeah, he is. And a double commit there on the side of Northridge, and Addy's just going to take this one all the way down the field. And a really good start for Berkeley, just kind of allowing them to make their own mistakes. And obviously that's kind of what you have to do against this Northridge team. It seems like if they, they push up and get a little bit too aggressive, there is a strong possibility that they can overcommit just like they did there, and they have a one nothing lead now in game number three. It's a good start for them. Senior Taco and company trying to respond. Mute will keep the ball in the Berkeley zone. Logical gets a touch, but leaves it for Amateur. Amateur up, can't get the double. Richard cuts across to play it out of the corner. It's gonna be Senior Taco towards the goal. Mute is there, Logical makes the play. Still the pressure is on. Pops out in front of the orange goal. Mute to keep things going. Addy and Logical both committing to that, but they do find the clear eventually. They have got to continue to play solid defense. Again, the ball back into the orange zone. Amateur can't quite get the touch on goal. Will be Addy to clear it away. Pops up. Amateur is there. Back into the orange corner we go. Mute can't find the touch. Here's Senor Taco. He had an open shot. Sends it just a bit high. And again, we talk about how Northridge had all of the pressure as that one does fall in. I'm surprised that he couldn't get up to that. But eventually the pressure turns into a goal for Northridge. Yeah, they had all the pressure in game number two, and it's a repeat in game number three. Addy, a little bit surprising he couldn't get up to that one, but 
He couldn't, and now we're all tied at one. 341 left, and you're on, if you're on Berkeley, you gotta get another goal quickly, or else things could get out of hand again, as this shot's gonna go towards the net. No oh. one can make contact, but that one's gonna go in anyways. A good follow-up from Addy. Bit of <laughs> interesting touches in front of the net, but it works out. Yeah, Addy getting the second goal of the game. Good shot there, right off the post and in. It was a scramble out in front of that North Ridge goal. That's exactly what Berkeley needs. Try to get things back under their control here in this series. It's going to be logical to play this into the blue zone. Amateur, however, will pick the ball up and carry it back down. Addy and Mute combine right out in front of the orange goal into the corner now. Now Richard tries to flick it away. It's going to be logical back down the pitch. Amateur pops things up. That one's just going to reside in the blue corner for the moment. So, 2-1. Two minutes gone. Berkeley in the lead. They need to take this game if they want to force a game number four. They find themselves down 2-0 in the series. It's been a Northridge series, but it looks like Berkeley's starting to figure things out, except Amateur's going to sneak one by the defense. We're tied at two. Yeah, Addy just puts it on the midfield. And Richard, instead of going for that ball, goes back. I'm kind of unsure. Kind of confuses me a little bit, but... It ends up working out for the Northridge side as bumps his teammate out of the way of the save. Just unfortunate circumstances for Richard. He doesn't go for the ball and then trying to turn back to just get in a defensive position. He couldn't get out of the way of his teammate, but it's still only tied at two. So Berkeley still has a shot at this game number three. Still have a shot at forcing game number four. We'll see if they can score the next one as Northridge has a lot of the pressure that they did in game number two. Hopefully they can turn things around. Richard, an amateur, will combine in midfield. Addy collects and plays it into his corner. It's mute along the wall now. Logical, can't find the touchdown in front. Amateur and Richard combine. It will be Addy who can't get it by Senior Taco. Looked like a clear for Berkeley, but they still have to play in the defensive zone. Great challenges right now from Northridge to keep the ball in the orange uh, territory as Mute's trying to play this out in front. Amateur to Senor Taco. That one's just wide. Still, Mute keeps things going. Down in front of the Berkeley goal. Logical and Richard pass each other and they will find the clear eventually. So again, it's Berkeley surviving the onslaught from Northridge. We stay tied. Yeah, Berkeley just holding on by a thread at this point. These balls just going right in front of their own net and just getting away by the skin of their teeth. See how that goes. The senior talk is going to get a demo. This might be a shot towards net. Addy can't save it. And Amateur makes it 3 2. And this is a hat trick now for Amateur and another shot that just sneaks through the Berkeley defense. Looks like Addy had pretty good positioning, but cannot get up to the ball to make the play. So all of a sudden, Northridge battle back. They take the one goal lead with a minute 22 left to go. It's going to be Berkeley who have to play on the offensive side of the ball now if they want to tie things up in regulation time. Sadie and Taco in the corner. Now Richard looking for the pass out in front. Gets a second touch on it. It's going to clog things up in this blue corner for the moment. But Senior Taco comes away with it. Bouncing down towards Amateur. Shot on goal. That's in. Four goals for Amateur. It's 4-2. And Amateur having a really good game here, but... All of Berkeley play all come together in that defensive half, and Amateur's just going to take that and slot it right in. And if you're on the side of Northridge, you're going to take that. I mean, they've pretty much given you a few goals here. Amateur has been gifted a few. But if you're on the side of Berkeley, you got to come back. And, I mean, you can't double commit and position yourselves in the same spots like they have in this last minute or so, obviously things are panicked. As, and what a save from Addy. This amateur almost makes it 5-2. And would have ended the series for sure, but Berkeley has to come back and score a goal in the last score two goals in the last 30 seconds just to put us to overtime. You to play it out of the corner falls down for logical. He can't get it by amateur and Senor Taco clears it away. Time ticking away from Berkeley now. They need a score with at least some time left on the clock, but that touch might just seal the deal. 
Newt will keep the ball in the corner for now. Richard plays it down. Logical can't quite get there. That's going to do it. Game number three goes to Northridge. They take the series in a clean sweep 3-0 over top of Berkeley. Yeah, and they're a good job from them. I mean, they came out and they showed why they're, what, now 3-1 and one on the season. A good job from them. And Berkeley, I mean, we'll see them next. Uh, but... A pretty good showing in, in game number in game number three. I mean, obviously they had a couple defensive mishaps that'll happen, but they had a good they had a good game number one and game number three. I mean, game number two was a pretty much a write off. There was a lot of there's a couple of mistakes that they made in their own half and that sort of stuff, but that happens. But again, if you're on the side of Northridge, I mean, you come out, you clean sweep them, you did what you needed to do. And you got to feel good about it. I mean, they scored a lot of goals, and they controlled most of the series. And they scored a lot of goals, and they took a lot of shots, certainly, in that series. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take a very short break on the other side. We're going to go and watch Berkeley yet again. They will be playing for us uh, once more. They're going to be taking on California State Fullerton. I believe that's the Fullerton B team. So you're not going to want to miss that. We've got Berkeley and Fullerton up next. That can affect your confidence a bit. Yeah, I can agree with that. But uh, another thing is just, oh, what a fast shot. shot. A good shot there from Monster, make it 6-1. But it seems like Ohio State's just kind of giving the way the ball for three. And my goodness, Ohio State continue to survive in the series. But that will do it. Great double touch from Fist Guy. Who else to end the series but Fist Guy? And that is going to do it in three games for Shawnee State. He got bumped on that play, but he went through the hole. The ball's just off. Mass is there. Hits the post. Quack the follow post. It's on oh. the goal line. It finally goes in. And it's a 1-0 game for UT Dallas with two seconds left. If you're UT Dallas, you're breathing a sigh of relief. Tato Moon can't get up to it. Time towards the goal. Oh. It's in. He scores. Time win the game for Oklahoma. Game number five. What a series. And what a shot from time. Perfect. This from Al Liquid. And Arlington gets the ball for free in the midfield. And that's going to be a goal. And it always back to a mistake from Al Liquid. Yeah, Minna will get the goal. This 
Still need to score one more. Do. Oh, what a dunk. Darlington might have to be two. Yes, it will. Carnivus hammers home the hat trick. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Collegiate Star League. It is Wednesday night. It is Rocket League time. It's Hunted and Vitali. And we just watched uh, UC Berkeley versus Northridge. Northridge taking that series 3-0. We're going to follow Berkeley to their next matchup against Fullerton B. That should be an exciting one, Vitali. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see these two teams. Obviously, this is Fullerton B. Um, and they're, they haven't had the... The hottest start to their season either now you know uh barkley's 0-3 at that last series and fullerton is 0-2 so one of these two teams are going to get their first win tonight and i'm excited to see who's going to get it i'm not i'm really unsure if, honestly who who will get it i mean we saw berkeley in the last series but we haven't seen fullerton yet so i can't really make any you know educated uh guesses right now well, before we get started, I want to uh, give a big thank you to our sponsor in GameStop. GameStop is partnering with CSL in 2019-2020 to activate collegiate esports tournaments online and in person. Visit www.gamestop.com slash esports for more details about their GameStop Performance Center gaming clinics. GSPC gaming clinics are free for all players and give you an insider look at how the players you love to watch dominate the games you love to play. Be sure to check out our GameStop Weeklies, a series of community-oriented tournaments that run from November through March for a variety of games, including League of Legends, TFT, CSGO, Overwatch, Madden, Rocket League, Hearthstone, and Smash Ultimate. Sign up today on our website, cstarleague.com. But Vitaly, we have a match between Fullerton and Berkeley. And we just watched Berkeley get taken down in three quick games. What is their mentality coming into this one? It's got to be a little tough. It's got to be a little rattled. I mean, you went just went down in a sweep. So you want to try to make sure that you say, you know what? Re reset. Um, I think that's the biggest thing uh, that I could say is just you play. You just played. You got swept. You got outplayed quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit, but you got outplayed. You want to come back in this series and have a better mindset going into it. Just say, you know what? This series behind us. Don't worry about it. Let's get it back in this game. As they start out really strong, Logical able to open up the scoring for them. It's one nothing early. Yeah, great pass by Richard. Gets it by Fantasy Outlaw. And plays it right out in front for Logical to put into the back of the goal. So a quick start for Berkeley in game one. And, of course, Berkeley going to be in blue this time. Logical, Richard, and Addy. No changes there. Their opponents this time in Fullerton B. Fantasy Outlaw, Exhale, Hex, and Pure Mass in orange as Fantasy Outlaw just pushes that one wide. Nearly a tie game. Yeah, I mean, a, a quick start right off the jump for Fullerton. But still, that Berkeley defense is a little suspect, I feel. They get that early goal, but what a touch there from Richard. A good job in the counterattack, but... Our defense still seems a little bit su suspect, especially in their own end. Hopefully they can shore it up in this series, as we just saw the series where they just kind of got dominated in their own end, so. There's Richard. He can't get it by exhale. Nearly put that shot on goal. Now this one pops up for pure mass. Gets it by Addy. Richard's the last man back. Fantasy Outlaw almost got the dunk, but it rings off the crossbar. Stays out for now. one nothing still. Pure Mass fires. Crossbar again. Rebound. Crossbar once more. And the ball will be cleared away by Richard. And something that I wanted to notice is that um, as much as the, the shots are going off their own crossbar a lot, is this ball just, might just roll in as Richard has to make a save. It seems like uh, Berkeley is playing a lot faster, playing a little bit more confident rather than last series. They played a little bit slower, allowing 
a lot of more a lot more things in the defensive half right now they're they're challenging things pretty quickly they just have to make sure that they shore up that defense and not let shots in from the top of the box which was one of the biggest things but they are challenging things a lot quicker which is something that's really good for them going on in this series logical keeps the ball in the orange zone it's fantasy outlaw will find the clear gets it by logical that time now richard tries to turn it around there's exhale this one's going to bounce down in front logical off the back wall shot from pure mass is wide fantasy outlaw causing chaos in the blue goal but nobody able to follow up that play with a touch on net so we continue to play with Berkeley in the lead, 1-0, 240 left to go. Fantasy Outlaw, back wall, looking for the double. He gets it, but it's way high. That's going to be an easy clear for Richard. Richard able to clear that one to the corner and a double just a little bit off. But right now, Fullerton is getting a lot of good chances in that offensive end, even though you know, Berkeley is challenging things a lot quicker. It feels like they do have a little bit of space in the air, maybe not on the ground, but Create these plays in the air. They seem to not be challenging those as fast. So I wonder if that'll be a point of attack from Fullerton later on in this series and hopefully later in this game as well. As well, they help to push it to overtime. There's pure mass shot on goal. Good save by Addy on the goal line. Keeps his team in the lead, but now Fantasy Outlaw looking for a double. He gets it, but it's just wide. Rebound, exhale, can't put it on goal. We stay one nothing with Berkeley just barely hanging on. A lot of opportunities as now Richard will try to play it over top of the orange defense. But Fullerton has come alive in the offensive zone. They have not been able to crack this blue team. The time is running down. They've only got just about 90 seconds or so until things are, something's going to have to happen. Yeah, something does have to happen. I mean, they have had a lot of offense opportunities, especially in the air, a lot of double taps. Have been pretty free. Is this ball going to go off the backboard again? Fantasy Outlaw can't finish it off. Is they've had a lot of offensive opportunities, but they can't finish one off. So we'll see if they could do that in the last minute. They need you to force game number one into overtime. It seems like Berkeley's holding on. Is this shot's going to go towards net? Fantasy Outlaw oh, can't no. save it. I don't know if that was an own goal. I don't know if that was on originally, but it's still 2 nothing Berkeley. It certainly looked wide from my angle. Yeah, that was definitely well wide. Unfortunate for Fantasy Outlaw. Now, all of a sudden, Fullerton find themselves down two, even though they've had a majority of the good chances in this game. Only two shots on the board for Berkeley. But it has netted them two goals and to the zero of Fullerton. And that's really what matters at the end of the day. As Exhale is going to clear it away. Great touch from Fantasy, but there's nobody there. Pure Mass was the closest, but he was lurking behind. As now Richard plays this out in front. Addy, solid touch. This is going to get by the last defender. If this isn't a third goal, it'll waste enough time anyway that this should be the end of game one. Yeah, and they've done a good job of coming out in this game, number one. I mean, it is a little bit scary. They are playing a lot more defense than what I feel like they should be. But they're doing a good job of capitalizing on the offensive opportunities that they have. Obviously, one was an own goal, so there isn't much capitalization there. But they are making a lot of opportunities for themselves. And it felt like game number one in the last series, but this time... Berkeley was able to score and actually hold on to the lead. And I think that was a big difference from last series to this one. And that might be a big series going on if Cal if uh, Fullerton can't really capitalize on their chances. I mean, Berkeley is really strong defense. So really anything on the ground is savable. They just have to put something through in the air. I think they had three or four good solid chances at double taps in the air, and they just they couldn't finish it off. This it's funny because the series kind of reminds me of the last series that we just watched where Berkeley is is struggling in the midfield and they're not able to get on the offensive side of the ball. The big difference between this series and the last one is that Fullerton is not capitalizing on the chances that they're creating for themselves. A couple of crossbars, a couple of posts, a couple of uh, mistouched balls. And if those things start to shore up for the Fullerton team, Berkeley's going to have to solve uh, this midfield crisis that they seem to have right now 
because playing defense against teams that are peppering your net is not a great strategy in the long run. Yeah, no, it's definitely not a recipe for success. Uh, just letting your opponents take shots. I mean, it, it it doesn't really work all that well, but there is a, I mean, especially if Fullerton doesn't figure out that offensive, uh, their offensive abilities, they might be able to win this series just based on the fact that they can play decent defense and not allow Fullerton to really get any shots around the ground, any easy shots, as that midfield game from Berkeley is a little bit suspect. Um, they have to start winning these midfield boosts and start challenging the ball instead of turning back around and allowing these free shots to go towards their net. Yeah, I definitely agree. And again, we, we talked about how Berkeley came into this series uh, after that sweep. They played in the first series of the night. They're here in the second one as well. And uh, things look better for them now. It seemed like they were playing with a little bit more confidence in game number one. Granted, again, they were on the defensive half, but it looked like they knew what they were doing with the ball. They knew the touches that they wanted to make. And it seems like a big difference from series one to series two. What do you think happened in that in-between? I feel like they had more confidence. And uh, this team has gotten a lot more confidence, I felt. Uh, I think it's something I pointed out early on in game number one where they, they looked faster and they looked like they had more confidence in challenging the ball and winning those challenges. And it, it might have just been the fact that nerves played a factor. I mean, you're playing the first your first stream game most likely for these players and you don't want to make a mistake on stream and have people watch back home and be like, ha that guy made a mistake. But I mean, those nerves are out from your belt under like out under your belt and you're able to just play rocket league i mean just it, it's it's playing on stream is very weird um but those nerves they do go away for sure i mean some players are able to cha channel them into more adrenaline and hopefully that they're doing that right now as they're playing a lot more confident well we are underway with game number two just about 30 seconds in Close call early on there as Fullerton had an opportunity. They just rung it off the post. Fantasy Outlaw plays that one wide. But again, it's Fullerton on the offensive half, picking up where they left off in game one, but they need to score if they want an opportunity. They were shut out in game one. That's not going to be good enough. As Addy gets demoed from behind, Richard. Can't get it by exhale. It's going to bounce down in front. Fantasy shoots. He scores. There's the first goal for Fullerton in the series. And it comes at a great time a minute into game two. And finally, they figure out that aerial game. They had a whole, they had game number one to figure it out, and they couldn't. But now the first minute in the game number two, able to figure it out. And unfortunately for Berkeley, you can't save them all. And that ball goes into the back of the net, and they're down one nothing. Pure mass to play it into the blue zone off the ensuing kickoff. Fullerton looking for more, but it's going to be Addy to clear it away. Both teams coming into the series looking for their first series victory. With the loss in the first series, Berkeley 0-3 on the season. Fullerton B at 0-2. So an important series for either of these two teams. This is going to bounce out in front. Logical and fantasy combined. I think that was actually exhale to get the touch that time. Will be pure mass to play it back in. Now Richard to clear. We approach the two-minute mark. Still a one nothing game for Fullerton. They haven't had quite the possession in the blue zone that they had in game one, but they're maintaining possession of the ball, which is by far the most important thing you could do in this game. Yeah, definitely. Possession game is what they're good at. Is that it's just to say that they boom it long, and give her the ball back. But they're doing a good job of controlling the ball in that blue half. It might not be, there might not be, you know, as many shots as there were last game. As this might turn into a shot here as Outlaw. It's an open shot, but Richard able to get back in time. But it feels like Fullerton is doing a really good job of creating opportunities. They did that in game number one, couldn't capitalize, but now. It seems like the the switches flipped a little bit. They they scored a goal and now they're just like you know what, 
It happens, you know, game number one happens, so just throw it behind us and I'm trying to score more in here in this game number two, because we've already scored one. Pierre Mass over top of Addy Richard to clear it away. Addy can't quite find the touch. It's going to be exhale into the corner. The pinch off the wall is good, but Richard gets there in time. Now Pure Mass, he's looking for a pass out in front. Addy one more time will rotate over. Great job by the Fullerton team to keep the ball in the blue corners. Wasting a lot of time on the clock, uh, generating some opportunities. They haven't had a lot of good shots on goal, but you don't need them when the blue team can't break out of their own zone. As Dex Hale nearly has an opportunity, but can't quite find the touch. If you're... And something I, I, someone I wanted to point out actually was uh, on the defensive side is Richard for Berkeley. He's shutting down a lot of uh, defensive, offensive plays from Fullerton, whether it be on the backboard or any backboard reads that they have. He's done a really good job of forcing Fullerton to really not get the shot that's, shots that they want or clear things away. I feel like he's been a huge cog in why they're only down by one in this game number two and why they haven't been scored on a whole lot is it makes it two here pure mass with a good shot on the pass from fantasy outlaw yeah fantasy outlaw great play along the sidewall gets it by richard pure mass to drive it home so two nothing game for fullerton berkeley have some work to do here in game number two this is going to bounce down in front no touch from Exhale. Fantasy Outlaw off the back wall. It's going to be Richard. Try to send this towards the cage. Bounces down. Addy out in front. Had logic there, but the cut from of the pass by Fantasy was just enough to take that opportunity away as he tries to get that by Richard. Final 35 seconds left to go. Good attack being started now by Berkeley. Both players up, however, and that's just going to fall down for an easy clear by Exhale. Yeah, and something I noticed right at the end of that play, Logic, he'll, Logic will have no boost, unfortunately. So he's probably just said to Richard, go up because I don't have any boost. But it was a double commit, and really no, both players couldn't get there as a pass in the midfield. Can Addy finish it off? Yes, he can. And with 13 seconds left, Berkeley still has a chance here in game number two. That they do. It's logical to start the play. Nearly scored it himself, but it's a beautiful pass out in front for Addy to knock home. And that makes it a 2-1 game with only 13 seconds to go. Kickoff's going to be important. It does fall into the orange zone. Addy trying to be quick to the ball. It's going to be pure mass to get there first. Touch across the pitch. Logical is there. Has to beat exhale. Cannot do it. That should do it. It will. Fullerton take game number two. And we're tied up heading into game three. Yeah, and this is a really close game. I mean, both games have been pretty close, but this one was fairly close as well it felt like as much as fullerton was controlling a lot of the the plays a lot of the offensive possession it really didn't seem like they had a whole lot of shots um obviously as you can tell they only had seven i mean they had seven so that's quite a bit of shots but it didn't seem like they had a lot of quality shots they just kind of throw the ball at the de defenders hoping that it would go in and if you're on the side of berkeley i mean you played pretty good defense but again you just gotta show up that midfield game you just gotta Make sure that you try to beat these players to the punch at midfield or else you're just going to be in a really bad defensive situation the whole time, you know, whether you have no boost or whatever. Because I felt like Richard bailed them out a lot of times on the defensive side, whether, it was, as I said, whether it was any touch off the backboard and any reads. And if you're Berkeley, you just, as I said, you want to clean those up so you don't have those issues in game number three. Obviously, we are tied at 1-1. And again, uh, it seemed like Fullerton was playing the possession game quite well. Berkeley needs to get in there and try to break that up, either cutting the passes, being a little bit over aggressive, trying to, to take away time and space, or even utilizing the demos and bump plays that we see uh, in just about every level of Rocket League that can be so very effective at getting people out of their rotations, getting them out of their comfort zones. Uh, either way, Something needs to happen for Berkeley. They need to start winning the possession game instead of taking it where they can. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that they need to do a lot better of a job in the midfield, as you said, uh, taking the possessions away, just making sure that there isn't 
the possibility of being on defense as much as they have is the, the midfield game is huge for them. So there isn't there isn't much that they can do. And unfortunately, we do have a issue. <laughs> Uh, players player, got a little eager that time. <laughs> yeah, players got a little bit too eager. One player wasn't in the lobby, but we will unfortunately have to remake the server. So hopefully we get to game three in a minute or two. But, I mean, if you're Berkeley, it gives you a little bit of time to say, you know what, let's start winning these challenges in midfield. You just got to play a little bit better. You just got to be faster at the midfield than them. Um, cause Fullerton is beating them with the punch almost every single time. And it, it did seem like Fullerton kind of came into their element a little bit there in game number two. Of course they dropped game one, weren't able to put any points on the board in that first game. They managed to score a couple and that's all they needed there in game number two. But you know, again, the defense from Berkeley has been quite good. You pointed out Richard, I have to agree with you. His back wall play has been stellar. And uh, if that continues and Berkeley can find that offense, something's going to have to change on the Fullerton offense. Because, again, we talked about the possession game and how Fullerton is winning that. And when a team is, is winning that as hard as Fullerton has been through the series, they should be generating more offensive opportunities. And it's been the shutdown defense of Berkeley that has stopped them from doing so. So if that play starts to even out a little bit more in mid, Fullerton could be in trouble. Yeah, if they really could. I feel like this team could be a lot stronger if Berkeley just focuses on that midfield game. Um, their defense is pretty spectacular. I mean, as as we both said, Richard has stopped a lot of things on the defensive side. So I feel like if they start winning those challenges in the midfield, there is a strong possibility that this series could get turned around real quick. It looks like the server is up and running. We are good to go. Players are joining now for game number three. Bit of a rubber match between these teams tied at one. The winner of this will certainly have that uh, game advantage, or at least they will be on match point for the next couple of games. So you do not want to drop this one if you can help it. It's going to be... Berkeley with the first possession. Exhale does find the clear. Addy has to make that touch. That was scary. Hard clear from Exhale. This goes by all three of the orange defenders, and Pure Mass will have to chase it into his own corner. Yeah, and as you said, it was a little bit scary. I just got a, little, a couple flashbacks to the last series where Addy just had a couple of missed touches in net, but the, he does get it, and it seems like it's just back and forth at this point as Addy's going to pop this one up on the midfield for Fantasy Outlaw. Move that one away, and something that I'm noticing as Richard takes a shot is Berkeley is having a good amount of offensive pressure here in this first minute, which is something we haven't seen all night. Pure Mass does eventually get the ball at least to midfield. Addy's going to keep it in. Comes off the back wall, but exhales there to try to control things, slow down the pace. Though he does play it right to Richard, who's now... Maintains possession, can't get it by exhale. This will give Pure Mass a chance to clear it all the way down. But a bit of a missed touch gives Logical a chance. Back and forth we go. A couple of missed touches in mid from either team, and no real opportunities yet here in the first minute and a half. Let's exhale up to try to get the double. It's going to be Richard off the back wall again. Certainly seems to, to love to lurk on that back while looking for the passing plays. It's exactly what they need to do to try to get into this Fullerton rotation. But as we approach the three minute mark, game number three. Still tied up at zero, but Fantasy has a shot. He can't get the flick hard enough to get beyond Richard. So we stay tied. We do stay tied and Something that Fullerton is doing a really good job of is taking Berkeley's boost in their corners and really not allowing them to break out of their their own third as they almost got a goal there. And Berkeley's having a lot of chances. Addy's going to put that one up both posts and Richard going to finish that one off. And it's one nothing Berkeley here in game number three. Yeah, missed touch from Exhale. He wants to try to control it but ends up giving the ball away to Addy. 
Addy nearly scoring on the shot. Just rings off the post. Richard in perfect position to make the play. But it's 1-0. That's halftime. Comes and goes in game number three. Exhale, shot, just off the post, rebound. Good save by Addy. And again, it's the Berkeley defense holding strong. Fullerton's got to break it here at least one time in game three. And Berkeley's defense, as you said, holding them in. They're doing a really good job. I mean, if it, it feels like game one again. I mean, although Berkeley has had a lot more offensive pressure, I will give them that. They're allowing Fullerton to take a shots of the net and there are a lot of scary shots they're just going right off the post or just being saved last minute and unfortunately if you're on the side of berkeley that's too scary for me you don't want to let these shots go through because eventually one of them is just going to break through your defense and you can't do anything about it 90 seconds left to go one nothing for berkeley it's addy can't get it by pure mass Bounces down for logical. Exhale around the side wall and he'll touch it back down. Addy now. Try to play out of the corner. Gets the better of fantasy there. A pure mass keeps the ball rolling in the blue half. Richard. Great click to get over the first defender, but fantasy outlaws there in support. Logical. They'll get it beyond. Final 60 seconds now of game number three. Still a one nothing lead for Berkeley. Logical back in position to make the save on the Fantasy Outlaw shot. It's starting to get a bit dire here now for Fullerton. Yeah, I mean, as Hex is trying to take a shot, he's trying to try to get past Logical, but he can't. And you feel like they're going to try to start pushing all these defenders up and try to get that, that goal. It might be a little bit of panic time as this just rolls right in front. Oh, fantasy no. Outlaw is going to be given a gift from Berkeley and his world tied at one. Yeah, this is an unfortunate commitment by Addy. Richard was there for the clear. And Addy not able to clear it himself. So we are tied up at one. 31 seconds left to go. Fantasy Outlaw into the corner. Oh, Out in no. front. Oh, he hits the crossbar with a shot. Nearly the game winner from Fullerton. They can't quite put it home, so Berkeley survive a close call in. Now Logical going to get it beyond pure mass. This is going to bounce off the ceiling. Comes down in front. It's out in front for Addy. Great save. Rebound. Another one. And with five seconds left, we are approaching overtime. Both teams having solid chances. That's just going to be killed by Richard. But we go into overtime, and things are a little bit scary on both sides. Hopefully things can, they can shore it up as that's just going to just go win from Exhale. And they take a 2-1 lead in the series right off the kickoff. Oh, we can't really see it in the replay there, but Addy and Richard get hung up on each other. Logical not able to get up to make the save in Fullerton Steel game number three. And it was a close one. Again, the, you said it earlier that this game felt like a game one, but unfortunately for Berkeley, they were not able to take the victory here. But again, it was the Fullerton possession, the Fullerton offense that eventually shone through. I mean, if you give up 13 shots, eventually, you know, one of them's going to go through. And in the last 30 seconds, when the pressure really started to hit, unfortunately, they just laid an egg in their own box and. That's what happened. And then right off the kickoff, I mean, that was really tough. I, unfortunately, just uh, it was just unfortunate. I mean, that's that's all it is. Their defense really kept them in this game, but unfortunately, when you get to a point where you gave up 13 shots, as I said, eventually something's going to go through. And if you're on the Berkeley side, that's just going to be so demoralizing. You go through the full game, pretty much controlling oh not controlling but pretty much having solid defense but not really able to do anything not having anything to show for it at the end something certainly needs to change again here for berkeley they had the one goal lead early on and again you'll have to remake the server unfortunately i don't know why this continues to happen 
Players just too anxious, I guess. I I reckon so. But we're gonna go ahead and remake remake the server here in just a minute. Um, Berkeley, they're down two games to one here in this best of five, and uh, it's a bit better of a situation than they found themselves in the last series. Of course, getting swept, uh, but it still feels like the the momentum the possession game is still fully in fullerton's uh control berkeley i, I just i don't know what exactly i want to see i would i i personally i would love to see a couple of demos uh and, and some bump plays some physical stuff from from berkeley to try to disrupt that rotation but if you are the berkeley coach right now what are you saying to them heading into game four well, kind of what you're saying. I mean, the bumps and demos, obviously, it's a popular strat right now. It's, it is the meta. Um, so just f trying to force them out of rotation, whether it's bumps, whether it's just scaring them even, and trying to win that midfield back. I think we've said it for all the games that they've been on broadcast, just trying to win that midfield battle because it's felt like they haven't done so at all, pretty much. I mean, they had a good minute, minute and a half of offensive pressure in game number three. But once that ended, it was all Fullerton and they had 13 shots as they start off quickly here. A kickoff goal that just pinches right to the net. One second is one nothing Fullerton. One nothing, one second in the pinch off the kickoff. Exhale getting the better of that. Fullerton find themselves in the lead. In game at number four, of course, if they take this one, the series is done. But if Berkeley can battle back, we will see a game number five. You see Berkeley certainly a uh, historic school, not just in academics or, or real life sports, but in the esports scene as well. Certainly have uh, a couple of StarCraft II legends who have come out of that school. I believe they've even won a couple of championships in the C Star League have UC Berkeley. I think they even took a Dota 2 championship a couple years back with Holly. I think they did as well, but I mean that doesn't mean anything with Rocket League right here right now. <laughs> Dota 2, Rocket League, hmm, an interesting comparison there. I mean obviously it's a school that's, they want to live up to expectations, but it seems to be they need to, to work on some stuff. I mean, obviously the midfield game is the biggest thing and allowing too many shots is another. Is this, it's going to go off the post. Can anyone clear it out? Yes, they can. Addy's going to get bumped out of the way. But if you're on the side of Berkeley, again, you just can't allow all these shots to be taken at the net. Or again, eventually one is going to go through. You just can't, you can't allow these shots to go through. You got to start winning these battles in the midfield. Or else it's just going to be all Fullerton again in game number four. Well, Fullerton does have the advantage. one nothing, a minute 30 into game four. But Berkeley, they are swarming now. Just trying to keep the ball in the zone. They haven't had a good opportunity yet. So that touch from pure mass will at least alleviate some of the pressure on the orange half. This bounces out in front. Logical's there. Can't get by exhale. Bounces out towards Addy. He wins the 50. Logical one more try, just wide, gets a second touch, and it careens into the orange corner. This one again bounces down in front. Richard can't beat Pure Mass to the ball. And that was the best opportunity Berkeley has seen here in game four. Yeah, it was. Unfortunately, they weren't able to capitalize on it, but there still is three minutes left. As Benny's the outlaw able to clear that one down all the way through down the field and get a demo. Good play from him, and Pax able to win that challenge on midfield. A shot towards net. Can't put that one in, but. Berkeley, really trying to start speeding things up and beat Fulham in the ball. Is that's going to bounce over Richard's head? Can't do anything. Addy and him are just kind of locked up. This one just might go in. No, it won't. How does that stay out? What is going on with this defense for Berkeley? It's ridiculous. A heroic effort by Addy on the goal line. A couple of saves to keep the game one nothing. As now Richard just trying to alleviate some of this pressure on the blue half but again it's going to be fullerton to keep the ball in sends this one towards the net richard does make the clear exhale plays that away from pure mass richard pops it up in mid fantasy outlaw takes it to the far wall but addy keeps things going exhale into the wall yet again now pure mass out of the corner 
Looking for the touch out in front. Gets help from the defender. This one bounces down. Exhale is there. Takes a shot. Bouncer just high. And Addy at least gets the ball back to mid. Pure mass shot. Good save by Logical in rotation. Yeah, I mean, I was about to criticize Logical a little bit. And as Exhale was coming in for a shot, he just kind of left the, not the net and went for boost. But it ended up working out as he made, came back and made a save or two saves. But Fullerton is right all over Berkeley right now. It's Logical. It's just going to try to put it past the whole defense. He can't. Another pop up high. Berkeley. Where's the follow-up from Addy? There's just no one there. They needed someone to follow up so that they could actually they could score. But right now, it just seems like they're playing a little bit too cautious. It's a pass in the midfield, but nothing doing. And Berkeley needs a goal with 50 seconds left, or else they lose this series in four games. Pure Mass not able to find the touch, and. Certainly, it seems like a bit of uh, timidness coming out in the side of Berkeley, but that's a great play out in front. Can't be timid on that play as Richard slams it home. We're tied at one. A great pass here, a great challenge from Logic. Both players go on the side of Fullerton, and if you're Fullerton, you both can't go. There's got to be a bit of communication there saying, you know, I've got it, but unfortunately, that plays over in Berkeley. Ties the game at one. Is this going to be shot towards net? Fantasy Outlaw can't hit it, but another shot off backboard. And Fullerton has pretty much owned that backboard all series. Is Richards going to get it past all Great. of them? No Great. one's going to go in. A solo play from him with 20 seconds left. They take a one goal lead. Richard, the hero right now for UC Berkeley. Two goals in the past 20 seconds. And all of a sudden, Berkeley find themselves up a goal, and they only have to defend for 20 more seconds now. It's so will be Richard to play it back in. Can he get a third? Tries to get by. He gets a round one, but he can't get the follow-up touch. Final 10 seconds left to go. Exhale has fantasy in mid. Can't find the touch. There's Addy to clear it back down. Three seconds left. It bounces out in front. Richard shoots, and he will score. Why not? Richard, the hat trick to secure game four. We will see a game five. We will see a game five. Richard getting three goals in, what was that, 36 seconds, 26 seconds, something like that. And a fantastic comeback in the last minute from Berkeley. It really felt like Fullerton had it. I mean, in the last minute or so, but then yeah, Berkeley just comes out of nowhere. And I mean, Richard really comes out of nowhere and scores three goals in the last 30 seconds. And he wins the game. And we're forcing, they force game five after what seemed like Fullerton was really controlling game number four. And they had no business winning. Now we're going to game number five, and anyone can win this one. And that's the danger if you are the team that dominates the pace of play and you, you, you keep that possession game going, but you're unable to score. A one goal lead is never secure. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. You can make a mistake and all of a sudden we're tied again. And that's kind of what happened on the defensive half for Fullerton. They weren't able to make the plays necessary to keep that one goal lead. And all of a sudden, Berkeley, who seemed to be struggling, who seemed out of it at the end there at game four, they've got the momentum. They've got the energy now to carry over into game five. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that momentum, that's got to feel so good. I mean, if, especially if you're if you're Richard, I mean, you had pretty much four minutes of nothing if you're Berkeley. But you come out and you score three goals in 30 seconds. You got to feel fantastic in this game number five. But as I said, game number five, we'll see who wins it between Berkeley and Full uh, yeah, Fullerton. I can't talk. English is still... <laughs> Very hard, but I can't wait to see an exciting game number five. We are 20 seconds into said game number five. No score, but Fullerton will start on the offensive side. Bounces out in front. Pure Mass can't get the touch on goal. Now exhale with an opportunity. Flips into the ball. It's going to be Richard. Actually takes that away from Logical and bounces out in front. There's exhale. Solid touch, but Richard again on the back wall. We have seen him all series long. Staunch defender of the back wall. Knows the importance of playing that back wall defense. And it has really done UC Berkeley well to have Richard in that position. 
Oh yeah, I mean, I feel like if, if he wasn't playing backboard, no one else would. Um, he's really done a good job of just not allowing these chances to come through on the backboard for Fullerton. It's going to be passing the midfield. And it, it's just going to be cleared across. And we're going back and forth in game number five. Really no fantastic chances from either team as that's going to be popped right in front. And pure mass can't get a shot on target. Fantasy Outlaw going to put that one in the midfield. Hex just putting it in the corner. And Berkeley... A little bit scary defense in game number five to start out is you don't want to start in your defensive half. You don't want to give up a goal here early on. Logical. Bombs it down the pitch. Exhale has to turn it away. Small flick towards the goal. Easy clear for fantasy right to pure mass. Plays this into the corner. It's Addy now. Gets around the attacker, but Exhale is there to help out his teammate. Towards the net, Logical has to go up and make the play. Nearly got caught out of position on that shot. But it is able to keep the ball out, so we continue to play on nil-nil. Just over two minutes have elapsed in game number five. Pure Mass off the back wall. Hops up high, Richard. Solid touch, but it's exhale. Oh, no. Gets it by Logical. Shot by Fantasies just wide. Pure Mass, the follow-up. This is going to come down and be dangerous, but Addy's there to clear it away. Luckily, that didn't bounce right down in front of the in front of the net. It bounced in front of the post, but that's going to be another clear down. Richard, thankfully, is back in time as he almost got caught on the counter attack, but it's going to be in the midfield again. And it seems like Richard's trying to play a little bit too fast. He's taking the ball away. I mean, he has been a very solid player on the side of Berkeley, but he's just... Taking the ball away a little bit too much. He's trying to be a little bit too much of a solo player for his own team. Obviously, it is working out a little bit, but still, you want to see those team plays come through for Berkeley. And it comes down to this. Whoever wins the next two minutes of Rocket League will have their first victory in the Collegiate Star League 2019-2020 season. This one bounces up for pure mass. Quick shot on goal. Crossbar. Fantasy. Just wide. He hit the post with the shot. As Richard goes by the attacker. Tries to get by. Fantasy. It's popped up in front. Pure mass is there for the clear. Hey, good job. Richard able to clear that one down. Logical gets a demo. Addy. Gonna try to put this one in the midfield. And Berkeley showing signs of life. On the offensive side, they've been having they've been on defense for most of the game, but now they're starting to wake up on the offensive side as well. It's gonna be a shot towards net, but Addy. Look through that one away. Logical. Oh he backflips, and that's gonna be the first goal of game five. A mistake by logical, and it costs him a goal. Yeah, an innocent shot by fantasy outlaw and logical can't get up to make the touch. So a one nothing game now for Fullerton with 63 left on the clock. That goal could be the series winner if things stay the same, but there is still time left. Exhale to Fantasy, shot, he scores. He gets his second in the, in the last 10 seconds, and Fullerton have a 2 nothing lead. And a really good passing play here. Fantasy Outlaw just upfield, ready for that one. He puts it into the... Middle of the net, Richard not ready for it. And now Fullerton has a 2 nothing lead with 50 seconds left. And Berkeley having to score two, they have to score one now as Richard gets a kickoff. He makes it 2-1 with 49 left. And there still is a good chance for, for Berkeley. And when Berkeley need a clutch goal, it's nobody but Richard to put it home. The hero of game four. Now has one here in the dying moments of game number five. We'll see if he can do it again. Try to send us into that overtime period. This is going to be out of the corner. Logical doesn't find the touch. Bounces down towards the full boost of the orange side. But again, Richard actually gives the ball away now. Exhale into the blue zone. Logical up to take that away from pure mass. Addy trying to beat Fantasy and does. Has nobody else to beat. But can't get back to the ball before Exhale can turn it around. Will bounce down in mid. Final 20 seconds left on the clock. Still one goal necessary for Berkeley. Into the blue zone we go. Richard into the corner. Has to play it away. They've only got 10 seconds left. The challenge is there from Addy and the clear is in. Final five seconds. Great play from Fantasy to kick it across the pitch. 
Richard now has to keep the ball in the air if they want a chance. Exhale with the challenge. Out in front. That'll do it. Fullerton take the series in five games. That was a close series if you're Fullerton. But they finally get their first one of the season. And they will move to one and two. And a good series from Berkeley. Unfortunately, they, they went 0-2 on the night. But a really strong bounce back after getting swept in the first series. And it was a very, very close five-game series. It, at times, didn't feel as close as it was, but Berkeley, they put up a fight. They managed to take a dramatic game four to send us into game five and uh, just just fell short. But a solid effort throughout the night. It, it felt like Berkeley was gradually improving as the night went on. Yeah, definitely. I, I felt like Berkeley really showed up in that, that last those last few games, especially game number four. Um, I think that was their best best game of the night. Um, but, I mean, unfortunately for them, they couldn't do anything more. But we, that is it from that series. But up next, we have our third and final series of the night. It's going to be the Long Beach Beach Boys up against the Northwood Timberwolves right after the break. You guys won't want to miss it. Hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Collegiate Star League. 
<laughs> it is uh, Rock League Wednesday, and we have one final matchup for you on the evening. Long Beach versus Northwood. Yes. And I'm very excited for this one, Natali, because these are two teams that have had success so far in the regular season, and they're going to go head to head. Yeah. Um, one sweep that they, one win that they've had is a sweep. The other one that they've had, they got swept by Cal Poly. So, uh, mixed success there, but it is Cal Poly, so you can't, I mean, pretty much any series against that is just kind of like, oh, well, we played Cal Poly. What are you going to do? But on the side of Northwood, I mean, they, they're they off to a 2-0 start, so a really good start from them. And you want to see – you want to have continued success in this season. Obviously, as I said earlier in the night, it's a long season. But any wins you can get early on really helps you later on. Yeah, and again, a, a good start for both teams in the season. And, you know, if you can get a victory over a team that has had a similarly hot start to the season – uh, as you that that even propels you a little bit further right i mean that gives you even more confidence uh, in like we were talking about a tough division with some of the the better teams in in the college scene yeah definitely i mean if, if you're on the side of uh what do you call it uh the beach boys <laughs> uh i love that name i absolutely love that name um as i said you play cup poly so that's kind of just one week where you're like yeah oh well play cup poly but you want to get back into the good a good start here. Make it two one. Um, try to just bounce back. So hopefully, ho hopefully they come out of this series. But if you're on the side of Northwood as well, you've started up two and zero. Oh. So who knows what happens in this series? I'm really excited. This should be a really good series between these two teams. Um, I'm also looking forward to it as well. Looks like the teams are in the lobby and they are joining now. So we are going to get game number one of this best of five underway between uh, be between Northwood and Long Beach. You're getting tripped be, up on Beach Boys, too. This is <laughs> going to be Long Beach in blue. Employed Wolf, Mango, Sticky Rice, and Tactical Whiffs. For Northwood, Nino, Amp, and Full Send in orange. So we are underway. And again, we talk about how important first goals and first games are between teams like this that have had a lot of momentum coming into this week. And this it gets even more amplified when you think about that. Yeah, and I mean these two teams, they're pretty decent. I mean, uh, this Long Beach team was a, uh, a CRL team last year, uh, last season. CRL season two, as you can see, the CRL season two contender tag. Um, but if you're on Northwood, uh, I know these guys as well. I've seen these guys play a little bit. Um, they actually played my my varsity team, their their A team in uh, Nace. So I, I I know these teams pretty well, and I feel like this is going to be a pretty good series between these two teams, uh, as they they seem pretty equally matched. So hopefully hopefully we did get a good series. It's just goals after goals. That's what I want. Goals after goals. <laughs> Well, this comes towards the goal now as Nino has to play it away. Oh, sorry, Nico, I think. That's what it mm. looks like. Is that's a good flick. Mango Sticky Race has to make the save, but full send in perfect position for the rebound. That's in at one nothing lead for Northwood. Yeah, a good job from him. Mango Sticky Rice and Tactical Whips both go for that ball. That ball goes straight off the ceiling. Unfortunately, unable to do anything more, and it's a one nothing lead for Northwood. They get off to a good start, but Things do feel a lot more even. Um, these two teams are both pretty, pretty decent, both equally matched. So I feel like that one goal lead. Oh, what a demo there from Nico! And Amp is going to finish that off at two nothing lead for Northwood now. And you said it, Nico, absolutely searching and destroying on uh, uh, employed Wolf on that play. Two nothing now for Northwood. And it hasn't been for lack of trying from Long Beach. They just haven't quite been able to find the offense yet against this orange team. And still no shots on the board for Long Beach. Plenty on the board now as Full Send's going to get another one and another goal to his name. Why not? It's 3 nothing. Yeah, why not? I mean, Tactical Whip's just a pass down to Mango Sticky Rice, and he couldn't get a great touch. 
And it goes right in the box in full send. Right there to capitalize, and... I mean, Northward coming up to a hot start in this game number one. There's no stream nerves for them at all. So they're playing Long Beach pretty well in this first these first two minutes. Employed Wolf so shoots and scores the giveaway on the offensive side. And Long Beach, they take at least a go back. Yeah, uh, just so I was saying, you know, they're playing pretty well. I am kind of serves that one right up for Employed Wolf and Makes it a two-goal two game with three minutes left. So there is a lot of time for Long Beach to come back in this game, number one. 3-1, 2.55 to go. Full send, great pass. Nico scores. They get the goal back. It's a three-goal lead yet again. Very instant. Full send, just going to put that one off the back wall. Great pass from him and Nico. Perfect shot to the top. Unfortunately, the defender couldn't get back to it in time. And it's 4-1. With three minutes left, so it's still is a decent amount of time, but it's getting scary and scary as uh, we go on in this game number one. Mango Sticky Rice trying to generate some offense for his team. It's going to be amped to take another shot. Good save by Employed Wolf. Just gets underneath that play. Now full send. Great keep and gets it around the defender and scores another beautiful goal. That's for the hat trick for full send. It's 5 1. The Doomsday Dish coming out in full effect here. Full send. Full sending that one into the net. And hat with half the game gone. They're up 5 1. It's really just been utter domination on the offensive side. Long Beach having a couple of missed touches on the defensive side. And it's really just been capitalization from Northwood. They've done a fantastic job of just. Creating offensive opportunities and really just capitalizing on them when they get them. 5-1. Just about two minutes left to go. Statement game number one for Northwood, and they don't seem to be done. That is a good pass to full send, and he will score. Gets his fourth of the game. Three assists now for Nico, and it's 6-1. I mean, this is a beautiful passing play. It's 6-1 now. I was expecting, you know, a pretty, pretty close game, you know. Hopefully, it's you know an overtime game number one. But wow, Northwood just comes out in game number one and just, as you said, a statement game number one. Is there one goal from the Brazil and just interesting touches from Long Beach in their own half or non touches in their own half, not non touches that I that I would expect from this team. Obviously, a zero quality team last season. I'd expect a little bit better quality just on the defensive side for sure. 90 seconds to go. 6 1 lead as Full Send plays this in front of the box. Amp misses the shot. Thought that was a goal for sure. But ultimately, I don't think that missed opportunity will matter too much in the grand scheme of game number one. So it looks firmly in the grasp of Northwood. Employed Wolf tries to play it out of the corner. But looking towards game number two, some changes going to be necessary for Long Beach if they don't want to get blown out again in game two and find themselves down 0-2 headed into game three. Yeah, definitely some changes. I mean, on the defensive side, pretty much every offensive opportunity was capitalized on by Northwood. So I, I mean, unless they continue to perform it, a crazy rate. Their shooting percentage is pretty fantastic right now, actually. They've had, never mind. It's not a fantastic, but they've created a lot of chances. They have 14 shots compared to the five from Long Beach. So just a lot more offense that they're creating. And if you're on the side of Long Beach, you just want to shut down these offensive plays, try to win more battles in the midfield. I think it's the same thing that we said at Berkeley for two series straight. You just want to win those challenges in midfield, not allow all these offensive opportunities for Northwood to come through, because they have proven that they can finish off all of these opportunities. Well, that will do it for game number one. Northwood taking the victory six to one, and they now move into game two with a lot of momentum, and again, a statement victory here, really not giving Long Beach any kind of opportunities, anything to feel good about heading into game two. 
it felt like a suffocating offensive attack that Long Beach, they just didn't have an answer for. Yeah, it was just terrifying. I mean, if you're on Long Beach, you just want to clean things up. You know, you throw away game number one. You say, you know what? Game one happened. Let's forget about it and just move into game number two where just clean up all those mistakes that you had. I mean, those offensive opportunities from Northwood, they always capitalize on. So hopefully in game number two, you shut down those offensive opportunities. I felt like there was a lot of passing plays and just – really good shots so if you could just try to minimize those shots and cut off the passes you still you have a really good shot to gain number two and still in this series so hopefully they can come back in this one as we are having an issue with well, it's server. Always, always has to be something else with with how rocket league uh, tends to go on stream apparently one player can't actually join the team which is not a bug that I've seen recently anyway. But I guess we're going to go ahead and remake the server. Let's go and do that. We'll be back with game number two very, very shortly. Um, but again, it's going to, to be uh, Northwood carrying all of the momentum coming into game number two. And, you know, we talked about how getting in to, and breaking up those pass plays is something that's very important to do. What is, without going into way too much detail, what is something that, that your typical Rocket League player can do when they find themselves in that situation? Um, so let's say, uh, I don't, I, again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but if you see another player on the other side of the and they're kind of moving up at the same, they're kind of interjecting, you just kind of want to read that pass, have send one player out to, to kind of force the shot so you can have one defender in net and really not allow those those clean shots on net or try to just beat those players to the ball so they can't get a free shot on net or free pass. So if you're on the side of Long Beach, you just kind of want to make sure that you start winning those battles to the ball and not allowing those passes or having an eye for players on the other side of the field, seeing whether infield passes are coming or not. Right, and sometimes um, activating that uh, that aggressive kind of rotation a little bit early. As no, did they? Did that really actually just happen? Oh what? my goodness! It looks like we're probably gonna have to remake the server again. Uh, as somebody accidentally joined one of the teams before we could get everybody in, so we are going to definitely have to remake the server again. So very sorry for the delay. We will get game number two. <laughs> underway shortly i i mean these are collegiate <laughs> students here vitali yeah. i've never seen so many mistakes in in one night i mean these uh, i i would expect <laughs> long beach should i've made these mistakes obviously long beach hasn't made these mistakes but and they've been on the rocket <laughs> league official stream before so you know they would get punished for that sort of stuff but um they are college students, and you feel that, you know, they'd be like, ah, oh, you know, we're on stream. Let's not make these <laughs> silly mistakes. But, I mean, you expect that, but, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. So, well, um, either, way. <laughs> either way, this does give a long layoff uh, for Long Beach to get back into this series and just say, talk things over and see the kind of things that they can fix. Obviously, just take some advice. Maybe not take some advice from me. I'm a bad player, so. <laughs> do that but um just make sure that you talk things over and, and you know what kind of things that you have to do in game number two so that you don't get blown up just like in game number one well we will see how long beach can respond to this northwood team they've been uh struggling early on in game one they'll have to try to battle back here game two as soon as we can get that started uh, teams are joining in now. And uh, again, I think it comes down to, to the midfield play. It comes down to quicker rotations, cutting off those passes. We have analyzed that all throughout the night. And it's it's really interesting how you can see those teams kind of develop that, that play where you take a team that's as good as Northwood, as good as Cal Poly Pomona, and you see how well they can dominate that midfield boost game 
compared to a team that's kind of up and coming on the rise as some of these other um, collegiate teams, that it it's such a, a crucial part of the game, but it can be often overlooked by teams that, that are just kind of starting out, regardless yeah. of mechanical skill. Yeah, for sure. And we do have all the players in the lobby. We do have game number <laughs> two. It is a bit of a celebration as we do get game number two started. But as you said, I mean, there is, it feels like there is just a difference of, of quality of teams that you know, from the top down as employed Wolf just puts someone right off the post, just unfortunate for him. But you just feel like they, they have a, a better feeling for the game, a better understanding for the game, able to take away those midfield boosts and have just a better job of rotations as well. I mean, these two teams, very solid, so hopefully we get a, a treat for game number two and it's not just another blowout like it was in game number one. Well, this is going to be employed Wolf to try to play it around. Full send and tactical whiffs combined. Amp hard off the ceiling. It's full send one more time, but it will be employed Wolf back. Mango Sticky Rice just pushed it wide. Great pass. Long Beach, unfortunately, unable to find the early first goal, so we continue to play on nothing, nothing. As the minute mark has just passed us by, this will come down. Almost gets the touch, but this should be a free and clear goal for Nino, and it is. Yeah, uh, both players from Long Beach just go for that one. Uh, just a double commit. Unfortunately, uh, it turns into a goal the other way, and we're on the side of Long Beach. You gotta have some communication saying, you know, I'm up for it. And unfortunately, that just didn't happen. And both players went. And they turned into a free goal the other way. And Northwood starting out just like they did in game number one. Really creating, really just capitalizing on all the offensive opportunities that they had in game number one. They're, as I said, just doing the same in game number two. Nico with the first goal of the game. Already has three shots in this one. The only three shots for his team. Gonna rotate back now. Can't get by Tactic Whiffs. This is down in front. Mango Sticky Rice will score. And we're tied up at one as we approach three minutes left on the clock. Yeah, a uh, really good job from Tactical Whiffs to just 50 this one right into the box. Full send a little bit slow to get up for and Mango Sticky Rice able to beat him to the ball. And we're up tied at one. Three minutes and 15 seconds left. A good job for Long Beach to get, an, get that goal back very quickly not allow things to get out of hand like they did in game number one. Nico out of the corner. Bounces right. down in front out for employed Wolf. Man, the pinball play from Long Beach in the corner. It works out. It's 2-1. Yeah, Tactical Whiffs did not intend to get that touch. He was just falling and the ball happened to hit him and it just came right back out. And employed Wolf able to finish that one off and Long Beach had their first lead of the series it comes in game number two they've done a, a lot better of a job of handling this this pressure at midfield and that's the kind of adjustments that i wanted to see from long beach they did a really good job during the break they had an extended break they probably talked about it quite a bit but doing a lot better of a job this is going to go off the crossbar also i'm able to clear that one out but still good offensive opportunities for long beach here in game number two Let's see if they can continue it on Halftime greets us momentarily. So it is 2-1 in game number two. It's employed Wolf to play it back down. Full send. Wants to try to carry it out of the zone. Employed Wolf is going to challenge him there. Tactical whiffs as well. Demo out in front. Nobody home. But full send is able to make the clear. Double commit. This is a free goal for tactical whiffs. And he'll score a goal apiece for the Long Beach boys. And it's 3-1. Yeah, Mango Sticky Race just kind of puts that one into the midfield and full send and amp. Both go for it and tactical whiffs just gifted a goal there and it's 3-1 Long Beach. They've done a lot better of a job in this game number two. Creating offensive opportunities and not allowing Northwood to have the same offensive challenge chances that they did in game number one. Really challenging the ball a lot quicker, which is, as I said, exactly the kind of adjustments that I wanted to see. Here comes employed Wolf off the back wall. Has to be Nico. 
Gets it over Amp as well, but full sends there in support. Amp looking for the deflection. Comes right out to Nico, and he'll score. Beautiful positioning for the second goal from the Orange player. Yeah, and, I mean, Amp tried to get that bump, but both uh, Long Beach players went for the ball beforehand, and Nico reading that perfectly. And Amp, as he went up, he might have been going for the bump, but he forced uh, the defender into a really tough spot, forced to, him to put the ball where he really didn't want to. And just came right out to Nico, and he's able to slot it home. And it's only a one-goal game with a minute and a half left, and it's a lot closer than it was in game number one. I did feel like this series was going to be a lot closer than what was shown in game number one, and I'm getting that. I, I am corrected game number two on that. As Manko, ooh, he almost had that one in the back of the net, but Amp makes a good save to keep it a one-goal game. Great pass to tactical whiffs, but it's just a bit high. Spolstein tries to play it out of the corner. Uh-oh, team bump will send Amp away. Has only one man to beat, but employed Wolf. We'll watch that ball fall into the corner. Bounces down in front, tactical whiffs. Now Nico and Fulsen bump each other, but Fulsen gets back to the ball. Nico trying to beat Mango, sticky race to it, but it's not going to quite work out. As now Fulsen takes a quick shot, cleared away by tactical whiffs. We continue to play. One goal lead for Long Beach. 35 seconds remaining. It's now the counterattack. It's a two-on-one. Full send looking for Nico, but doesn't get the power to, gen to uh, get that across the pitch. Yeah, but unfortunately. Uh, they, have, they had a three-on-one there. Apologies. But they had a three-on-one there, and they just couldn't capitalize. They're kind of unsure of why he just went for the solo play there, but... Long Beach is just going to kill this game, it seems like, in that offensive zone. Doing a good job of it. Sactor Whiff's just going to pop it up, and they aren't going to win game number two. As he wins that touch in midfield, and employed Wolf going to finish that one off. And Long Beach wins game number two, 4 2, and ties the series at two, at one. Yeah, things tied up at one, heading into game number three. And a much better played game by Long Beach here, certainly. Uh, got out from underneath the Northwood offense, which was the the big key that they needed to do here in game number two uh, after the route to that Northwood put on in game one. So uh, I'm interested to see how things change up going into the third game because, you know, it didn't feel like Northwood played the same style that they played in game one. I'm not sure quite why. Maybe... They thought that this Long Beach team would just kind of roll over and it would be an easy series. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, I'd, I'd like to see Northwood get back to that same form. I think it was just the fact that um, Long Beach kind of adjusted. Um, they, they made sure that they didn't get as many offensive opportunities because it feels like this Northwood team is very offensive possession and shot focused. And when they don't get those offensive opportunities in those shots, they really can't do a whole lot. Um, as it showed in game number uh, game number two, with uh, Long Beach really controlling a lot of the game and any opportunities that Northwood had were just kind of shot away. They were kind of cleared away pretty quickly and no follow-up chances it felt like in game number two for Northwood. So I wonder how they'll respond in game number three. Well, already starting with the physical play as employed Wolf takes a demo. Nothing comes of it though for Northwood early on in this game. It's going to bounce around in the orange zone for the moment. Mango Sticky Rice trying to find some kind of opportunity. Employed Wolf can't get by full send in defense. Tactical whiffs down to Mango Sticky Rice. He's going to push that well wide. But the play is there. Long Beach really trying to, to uh, carry on where they left off in game two. As they are maintaining a large portion of the possession of the ball, which is a good sign against a... a power heavy northwood team yeah and as you said that uh that physical play came out really strong in number early on in this game but it seems to have quieted down now and that long beach team is really playing the possession game as amp gets beat to the ball by tactical whiffs he's able to clear that one out but now northwood starting to win these challenges of midfield it's a good demo there it's just going to be put right back into that orange half, and Long Beach doing a good job of forcing Northwood into their own half. A good demo there. 
But it's going to go all the way down the field. Can Amp catch up to it? No, he can't. And a good job from Longweed. Just creating offensive opportunities and limiting Northwoods. Yeah, they nearly got caught a bit too far on the offensive side of the ball, however, as Amp had that transition play. He just couldn't quite slot it home. So still the, the score at zero for both teams. Just over three minutes left. This will bounce towards Employed Wolf. Good clear off the back wall from Amp. Nico has time. He's looking for a full send across the pitch. He does get a touch, but it's right to tactical whiffs. This bounces out of the corner. Mango tries to play this out in front. Amp in transition. Keeps control of this one. And will put in the goals. And Northwood taking the one nothing lead. And a good demo right there. I mean, I don't think it won't matter to play. As all players were committed for Long Beach and Northwood, a good job of just biding their time to get that first goal. And we'll see if they can continue to do that as they, they've seemed to just absorb all the pressure from Long Beach and spat out a couple transition opportunities. They finally capitalize on one. Full send makes the same employed. Wolf gets shut down by Nico on the rebound. That was the best chance of the of the game for Long Beach there. We'll have to try to make that happen again to tie things up as full send into the corner, out in front. Good clear from Amp. Nico going to get Demon on the backside by employed Wolf, but full send. Keeping things hectic in the blue zone. Great block from Amp. We'll stifle the counterattack for now. Mango towards the front it will be full send who does find the clear he's got a one-on-one -on -one with employed wolf gets it by him looking for the pass out in front has amp waiting but mango reads that one perfectly and the clear is on we're back into the orange zone tactical whiffs doesn't get the shot but it almost took full send out of position for the follow-up yeah full send just not <laughs> not ready for that weak shot he was expecting you know a, a boomer on net and it ended up almost working out for long beach but just the transition plays right now it seem to be working out pretty strong for Northwood. They seem to be absorbing all this offensive pressure as an employed Wolf tries to get that shot to go through, but nothing doing it with a minute 20 left. Northwood's still up by one and nursing this one goal lead. It's going to be full send to rotate back. Can't make the play beyond employed Wolf, but eventually the clear comes out to mid tactical whiffs Great play to turn it back around. Out in front. Oh, Employed Wolf hit the post. Rebound saved away by Nico. Employed Wolf had a yawning cage and he couldn't put it home. And that is the chance of the game that is just given up. Just unfortunate for Long Beach, but they still have 45 seconds to get back at it. It's Mango Sticky Rice able to keep that one in. Although you do feel like if they don't score, his tactical win's just going to put it high. It's going to haunt him. As employed Wolf again going to take a shot towards Net Nico. Not the best touch, but it's going to be clear to the side anyway. Long Beach, all the offensive pressure is Mega Sneaky Rice. What a save from Amp. Employed Wolf into the midfield. Nobody touches the ball. Mango Sneaky Rice takes it away from tactical whiffs, and it stays 1 0. It should be maybe 2 1 for Long Beach. With the last 10 seconds, still they're buzzing in the offensive zone. This pops out. Amp took find the clear. Employed Wolf has to collect. He grabs the boost, gets by one. Nico's there to shut it down. And Northwood survive a hectic last minute. They will take the victory here in game number three and go into game four with the lead. That's going to hurt. If you're on Long Beach, that's really going to hurt because you have that open net opportunity and you outshot Northwood in this game. You had all of the pressure and now you go into game number four and you're down one, two in the series. And you're like, what do we do differently? Like we had all of the offensive pressure, but, you know, well, it, it just hurts. I, I think that's the biggest thing for Long Beach. But you just got to capitalize on those chances. I think they had a good – five five chances in that last 30 seconds that they really should have capitalized on and they just they didn't uh, one of the mango sticky rice took away from his teammate it's gonna be a quick shot off the kickoff it's gonna be saved away and we go into game number four long beach looking to force game number five in this series but northwood looking to take this one in four 
And again, you talk about missed opportunities. Certainly had a couple of those by Long Beach, but also a couple of heroic saves by the Northwood defense in those final moments. Tactic takes a shot. He'll hit crossbar and down, and that's the first goal on the board for Long Beach. And what a pass from Mango Stick Your Race. Just puts it right off that wall that bounces straight down. Goes off the crossbar and in. And Long Beach gets the first goal of game number four. A good step in the road to forcing game number five. But we'll see the four and a half minutes left to, to hold on and build on this lead going into game number five. Floyd Wolf gets by Amp. He's trying to find any kind of touch, but it will be full send to play it back down. Mango Sticky Rice looking for tactical whiffs. Great touch to get it by Nico. It's a second one as well, but Amp's there to clear it out. As we approach four minutes left, game four. Employed Wolf trying to get by the defense. This pops out towards Mango. He takes a shot. Great save from full send, dodging the incoming demo, making the play. Keeps his team only at a one goal disadvantage here with 3.45 to go. Yeah, not the strongest shot from Mango, but it ends up being okay, as they still are in the lead by one. Full send. Oh, wait, good demo from Ampus. That was the next man to challenge up. A really good job from him, basically to clear all the offensive pressure the Long Beach had. Now the transition is on as Amp can't get a touch on that ball. Just going to go in the corner and get cleared out anyways. Full send. Doing a good job, but Northwood, as much as they continue to not get scored on and have this good transition game, they still have to put in another one as this might be a shot towards net. It will be tactical. Whiffs will beat the last defender, and he'll make it 2-1. Sorry, 2 nothing. <laughs> And he will. Full send just couldn't get back to the ball quick enough. And the lobbing shot from Tactical Lifts finds its way in. So 2 0, 3 0, 4 left to go. Still plenty of time for Northwood to try to find the comeback here. I'm sure they don't want to see a game five if they can help it. So all three players going to get bunched up in the corner there. And here comes the transition play. Mango on goal. Great save by Amp. Just gets there in time. Tactical whiffs on the rebound out to Employed Wolf. He scores. It's 3-0 with 2.47 left. And this just feels like a tale of two two teams, really. I mean, in the in game number one, they got blown out. Long Beach did. They got blown out, and then they came back and had a fantastic game. And then in game number three, they couldn't score anything. And now in game number four, they're scoring almost everything. It just feels like it's inconsistencies for the Long Beach team. And I don't know. It, this team is just, it's weird to me. It feels like they're they are very strong. They obviously are a quality team, but when you can't score consistently or win consistently, I mean, it's got to be frustrating knowing that you can score goal after goal in one game, but just can't do anything in the next few games. I, but they're in a good spot to force game number five with two minutes left up by three. Well, here's Amp tries to add one to his total, and he will. 3-1 now for Northwood. It's a solid play out of the corner from Amp. He did not give up on the play, and Tactic Whiffs couldn't get there. Yeah, and just a good job of just staying with the play. Um, I mean, if you're on Northwood, that's really all you needed to get back into this game. Now it's a two-goal game, and Mango oh, Sticky Rice, no. uh, what was that? Uh, okay, he makes it 3-2. I... I don't know what this was. It looks like just a, a bit of a, an error <laughs> that was made on the kickoffs there. That will bring it back to a one goal game now as Northwood looks to battle back. And if you're Long Beach, seeing your lead disappear as quickly as it is has to be a bit concerning, but you still have the one goal. So bounce down in front. Tactical whiffs not able to make the touch. Nico now into the corner. Full send is lurking, waiting to get his touch, but it's employed Wolf to find the clear. Amp will turn, send it right back into the blue players. But we're going back and forth now. Both teams giving away the ball to the enemy. As I wouldn't be surprised if Long Beach is just content to play this style of Rocket League with uh, just about 90 seconds left. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. I mean, you have the lead. You can force game number five with this scoreline. 
So why not just play the long game and boom the ball back and forth as Mango Sticky Rice. Shot to the back post, couldn't go in. Tactical whiffs, gonna put that one in the midfield. Mango Sticky Rice again. Unfortunately, touch. Unfortunately, I don't know if Tactical Whips can get back. He can. He had no boost. That was going to be tough either way. But if you're Northwood, you got to you gotta capitalize on that opportunity. I got to pass in the midfield. I could save. And Northwood really wanting to tie this game in the last minute to hopefully end this series in four. Full send out of the corner. This bounces towards Nico. Amp takes a shot. Good clear by Tactical Whiffs, and now he's trying to follow this up. Is this in the net? No, just off the post employed Wolf Camp. Force it home, and that shot will be saved away by full send. So with 30 seconds left, Tactical Whiffs, great takeaway. Towards the net, out in front. Again, full send makes the save. Mango Sticky Rice down. Full send will turn it around. Nico is there! Off the post! He can't put it home! And my goodness, do Long Beach live through a close call, but there's still 10 seconds left. It's Mango and Amp. They will combine. Final five seconds. Bounces towards Nico. Amp takes it away from him. Into the corner now. This one comes off the wall. Down out in front. Mango will kill it. We're going to a game five. If you're Long Beach, you got to be counting your lucky stars that Nico didn't put that one in. That was a goal that every day of the week that should have been put in and unfortunately if you're in northwood it, instead of going into overtime you're now going into game five against a team that you don't know what kind of team you can get as i said this team has played really well in some games and a little bit suspect in others but in game number five it doesn't matter what the rest of the series has happened it's all of this it's it's this game that matters the most obviously Best of five is just a regular season format, but you want to get another win to hopefully add to your season total and continue to propel yourself. Oh, well, this, our second game five of the night. We have been blessed with some high action Rocket League this evening. It's employed Wolf looks to start the scoring and he will. That's a one nothing lead for Long Beach. And what a fantastic dunk right here from Mango Sticky Rice. He seems to be that player to create those offensive opportunities to, to assist those plays. Employed Wolf able to finish that one off. And with 11 seconds gone, they take a 1-0 lead here in game number five. And that's a good start for your Long Beach. Employed Wolf off the back wall. Tactical whiffs the touch. Oh, Amp just makes the save. Mango Sticky Rice doesn't get the follow-up. But Employed Wolf wants to keep the pressure on. It's going to careen all the way back to the blue zone, however. And into the corner, Tactical Wolf. Ooh, tactical Whiffs will thing. play that ball. Amp takes the shot. Employed Wolf making the save. And now Long Beach trying to stabilize on the offensive. I'm sorry, on the defensive side. So this is going to pop out in front. Amp solid touch over the top. This could be an opportunity if he can get it out towards full send waiting in mid. Not going to be able to do so. And we continue to play on one nothing with just a minute gone here in game five. Yeah, Long Beach seems to be a little bit all over themselves. A little bit of panic setting in, but they still have a lot of the game left as that was going to be a tough play as Mango Sticky Rice beats the last man. All tactical whiffs has an open net. He makes it 2 nothing. Long Beach, a good start to game number five. That is a deft touch from Mango Sticky Rice to get that over the final defender. And as you said, Tactical Whiffs, all he had to do was dump it into the empty net, did so perfectly, and it is now a 2 nothing lead for Long Beach. They have come back in this series. They were down two games to one heading into game four. They just took the victory in that game. They find themselves here, poised to take the victory in the series if they can keep things the way they are. There's still plenty of time. A minute 30 has expired in game five. Great pass to Mango Sticky Rice, but on the ground, Full Send will make the save. And Amp gets it at least out towards midfield, but you can see Northwood, they're really starting to push on offense, and they've already gotten beat once with the what transition. They'll get beat again. And all of a sudden, Long Beach out 
on top by three. Yeah, Mango Sticky Rice, just a perfect shot from midfield on the transition. And Long Beach, after what seemed like game four was a little bit scary at the end, they've really come out in game number five and made a statement here. Really, I mean, they scored three goals in the first two minutes, and it's really just been all utter domination on the counterattacks from Long Beach. Just done a fantastic job of not allowing Northrop to have really any opportunities. It's full send. Three jumps that and gets a miraculous save to keep his team in it here. Yeah, that fourth goal most likely would have been the killer for Northwood, but the, a good save by Full Send. Keeps it a three goal lead. As halftime has just passed us by. Game number five, Long Beach. Looking to take down Northwood, hand them their first defeat of the season. It's going to be full send, trying to make something happen. Falls towards the middle of the blue pitch where Mango Sticky Rice gets it out towards mid. Amp to Nico. Nico out of the corner. But they combine together, and it's a bit of some miscommunication on the north uh, Northwood half that has really been their downfall here in game five. Yeah, it really has been. They've seemed to be just panicking all over each other and long beach is just taking advantage mango sticky rice has another shot and another goal a beautiful shot to put him up for nothing long beach running away with this game quite quickly now four goal lead with a minute 50 to go only one shot registered thus far for northwood not something we have seen throughout the series. Great save by Amp. The follow-up now from Employed Wolf. Gets it by the first defender. Nico has to make the save. Tactical whiffs is up, and he'll score. Why not? Five, nothing for Long Beach. They are looking to put an exclamation point on the series. Yeah, this series, obviously, as I said, that first that game number four was a little bit scary, but they came out in game number five, and... Uh, they really took it to Northwood in this game, number five. They started out really strong, and they haven't looked back. As Amps going to try to go for a double, but he can't do so. And if you're on Northwood, I mean, what happened? He had the first really good three games, and then just it all fell apart. First, really, four good games, and then it just all fell apart in game number five. Just got to feel that it's nerves or something. Is Unfortunately, they did fall apart. Whether it was just communication or what, unfortunately, they won't be getting this series win as Long Beach will probably be winning this series in five games. And again, handing Northwood their first loss of the season. First That's loss. a great goal from Amp to at least put Northwood on the board. Claws it back to four goals, and the game is not over yet. We've seen comebacks of this caliber before. But it is, you would be hard pressed to find one here. They need four goals in the next 56 seconds. Yeah, it is going to be tough. I mean, it was a great shot from Amp, but if you're on the side of Northwood, unfortunately, as Amp just takes it away from his teammate, he had a free clear, and there's going to be an open net. Has a good 50, and Amp's just going to own goal, and he makes it 6 1. And unfortunately, that's probably the series end right now for Northwood. Yeah, absolutely. Can't, doesn't seem like it would be possible to come back from that. So congratulations to Long Beach. What a well-fought series. After they went down in game three, they, they, they dropped a fairly close game number three. It really looked like Northwood was going to run away with the series, especially after game one as well. I mean, it, it was this kind of blowout, but in Northwood's favor in game one, all of a sudden, Long Beach, they come out to play. They made the changes they needed to make. They sent the game to, or the series to a game five, and they absolutely took advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, they really did. I mean, as I said, they just needed to make a few adjustments, and they did that. I mean, game one was just a learning, learning game, realize, feeling out your opponents, realizing what you have to do differently. And you did say Northwood came out strong, but. Unfortunately for them, Long Beach adjusted. Didn't allow them to do really a whole lot much more in the rest of the series. And with that, the final seconds will count down and Long Beach win this series of five games, although it was a tough one. 
As we're going to get another goal for the road. Mango Sticky Rice is going to put that one in. A good series from them all around on both teams. And the final score of game number five will be Long Beach 7, Northwood 2. So congratulations to Long Beach. They continue their hot start to the season in hand. The first defeat of the season to Northwood. And it was it was a an up and down series for both teams. It felt like uh, again you can't uh, can't overstate how it felt for Northwood after game one, right? I mean, yeah. it looked like it was going to be a quick three game series if Northwood continues to play the way they did. But Long Beach had the response, which is not something you see at this kind of level. I mean, both teams are quality teams, and as I said in the pregame. Um, or at least teeing up this game, uh, Long Beach was a zero caliber team. Like that is the same team that played in zero season two. So they know they've played against quality teams before. They know how to make adjustments, and they did. They took that game number one. They said, "You won't forget it. Let's move on in the series." And I mean, they did a fantastic job of coming back and winning this series. Well, that is going to do it for us tonight. I hope that you had as much fun as we certainly did here in the broadcast booth. But before we go, I want to give a big thank you to our sponsor in GameStop. GameStop is partnering with CSL in 2019-2020 to activate collegiate esports tournaments online and in person. Visit www.gamestop.com slash esports for more details about their GameStop Performance Center Gaming Clinics. GSPC Gaming Clinics are free for all players and give you an insider look at how the players you love to watch dominate the games you love to play. And be sure to check out our GameStop Weeklies, a series of community-oriented tournaments that run from new November through March for a variety of games, including League of Legends, TFT, CSGO, Overwatch, Madden, Rocket League, Hearthstone, and Smash Ultimate. Sign up today on our website at cstarleague.com. But for Hunted, for Vitali, and for everybody here at the Collegiate Star League, we thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.